Hey everyone, it's Liam from Pushtware, and we've just seen our first glimpse at the PlayStation 5. Literally. I mean, we literally saw the bots. Wasn't it better than that? It's nice. I just thought I would do a quick video giving you my initial reaction to the event, as well as some light analysis alongside it. So the event in general was better than I expected, and I had high expectations at this point. It's been over a year since Sony first uh, started talking about the PlayStation 5, so it's fair to say that, you know, we've been waiting for this for a while, we're all quite hyped, we're all really looking forward to seeing what they were going to show off. Sony's whole approach to this current console generation has been unusual, I'm sure you'll all agree. We've not really been given a lot of information, they've been very selective as to when and how they give information. So for them to do an event like this that literally shows us over an hour of gameplay footage, information, the actual console itself was incredible. It was a really nice thing to finally see. And really from a marketing perspective, I think Sony have done about this in the right way. They've wet our appetites, they've really kept us on the edge of our seat for over 12 months, and now they've just released all of the information in a huge, explosive, bombastic, incredible digital event. Considering everything that's going on in the world right now, I think the company has just done really well to highlight what makes the PlayStation 5 so special in a way that was stylish and well-paced and also represented both AAA first-party releases, third-party games, and indie titles as well. When you think about it, Sony's last big presentation like this was E3 2018, when the company didn't really have a huge amount to show. So they showed off things like Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us Part Two, you know, these big end of generation PlayStation 4 games. And then since then, the company has retreated. Last year, we only had really two exclusives with Death Stranding and Days Dawn. And this year, we've had Dreams and Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us Part Two coming up, but really the company has been very quiet for a long time now. So for them to wait until this most opportune moment, you know, where we're maybe less than six months out of actually having the PlayStation 5 sitting underneath our televisions, it was smart. It was a very smart move and I think they nailed it. I think they really did nail it. Okay, so before anything, let's have a talk about the actual console itself. We've actually seen the PlayStation 5 now, and it's really nice. I'm surprised by the direction they've gone in terms of the design, but I was expecting it to be something a little jazzier than the PlayStation 4 ever since they revealed the DualSense controller, which visually was a little bit more out there than the DualShock 4. When you first looked at it, it looks a lot like the kind of renders that people would make for forums in the mid 2000s but i really like that when was the last time we bought a video game console that wasn't just a black box you know this is sleek it's stylish it's got weird blue lights in between these very thin white panels visually both the dualsense and the playstation 5 look similar which i really like you can tell that the dualsense is the controller for the playstation 5 just by looking at the two of them next to each other yeah, I like it. It's it's fun, and I think that is so important, and it's striking. You know, you can't look at that and not have some kind of reaction. Whether you love it or hate it, it's different and unique, and that is the attitude that I think Sony are trying to go into the next generation with. They are confident, as they have every right to be. They were the best-selling system of the last generation, and that self-assurance was evident throughout this whole presentation, I think. So we have two models of the PlayStation 5. We have the PlayStation 5 Standard, which has a disc tray, and we have the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition. I wasn't really expecting PlayStation to have a digital edition, but it does make sense. It's been rumored for a long time now that Microsoft will go into the next generation with a digital only version of the next Xbox, and they already have a digital version of the Xbox One, I think digital versions of consoles are probably going to be par for the toss moving forward. Consumers are comfortable now, I think, with the thought of a subscription-based service. Xbox Game Pass has really paved the way for a relatively cheap Netflix-style service for games, and it wouldn't surprise me if PlayStation Now is the main selling point for the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition. You buy a cheaper version of the console, you subscribe to PlayStation Now, you get the majority of first-party exclusives, maybe not day one, but eventually, you get all of the PlayStation 4 back catalogue that's already available through PlayStation Now, and you can also stream PlayStation 3 games if you so choose. 
I can imagine a lot of people who might not be hugely into physical collections of games or maybe don't have the time to buy new games as they come out opting for this because it, it is consumer friendly as much as for a lot of hardcore gamers the thought of a digital edition seems a little bit lacklustre and doesn't make a lot of sense. I know a lot of people in my life who would look at the digital edition and say, oh yeah, I don't have to buy brand new games. I can just subscribe to something like Netflix and just download games when I want to play them. Yeah, I think it's a smart move by Sony, absolutely. Also, they're selling a media remote, like it's 2001. Fair enough, Sony. <laughs> it's a weird move, but I love you for it. Anyway, let's talk about the highlight of the show, which was, of course, the games. There were nine first-party games announced during this presentation. Some highlights for me personally were Spider-Man Miles Morales, which looks incredible. I adored the first Spider-Man game and the thought of playing as Miles Morales in what looks to be a winter, maybe even Christmas-themed New York. Sign me up. That looks incredible. Can't wait to see more of this. Gran Turismo 7 looks gorgeous. Like, racing games are always a nice technical showcase for a new console, and Gran Turismo 7 looks no different. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart was great. I was expecting a Ratchet and Clank reveal because the rumours have been floating around for so long, but as a technical showcase for how quickly the PlayStation 5 can load in entirely new worlds, you know, jumping between the rifts and being in a crowded city at one point, and then, you know, in a different, wonderful, weird alien planet the next, it was incredible. Like, the loading time was so seamless between those two scenes. It was probably the best showcase of the technology that we saw throughout the entire show. So yeah, Insomniath, I'm absolutely up for that. Astro's Playroom was interesting. It looks like Astrobot is sort of getting a sequel to his rescue mission, but not VR. I do wonder if it will have VR functionality, just Sony weren't quite ready to show that off just yet. You gotta keep some you know, cards up your sleeve. A Demon's Soul remake by Bluepoint. Again, we've known about that for a while, but it was just nice to have these rumours confirmed. A lot of these rumours were confirmed, actually. And of course, we had Horizon 2 Forbidden West, which looks phenomenal. Horizon Zero Dawn was obviously one of the best first-party exclusives on the PlayStation 4. The opportunity to dive back into that world in new locations with new enemies, like the giant turtle robot, that was great, is fantastic. It's a shame we didn't get a release date, but I'd imagine this will be around the launch window which was a common theme of all the games that were announced during this presentation. They all seem to be releasing within at least the next 12 months, I assume, which is very smart of Sony not to show off anything that's too far away just yet. I'll probably eat those words when Demon's Soul Remake doesn't come out until 2025, but whatever. In terms of third-party games, we had Hitman 3, which I was not expecting, but I mean, that looks incredible. I love Hitman. Can't wait to murder some people on top of the Burj Khalifa. Deathloop is looking very, very fun. Arcane are making just some of the most visually interesting video games out there, and Deathloop looks like no exception. Just a fun concept. Can't wait to get stuck into that one. As the biggest Resident Evil fan in the world, and that's not something you need to verify, it's just true, don't worry about it, I am so excited for Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil 7 completely revamped the series in a way I really enjoyed. It was a bland slate for the franchise, and what I liked about it is that it basically looked to a different genre of horror and just created a brand new experience around that. And Resident Evil Village looks to be doing what Resident Evil 7 did for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, to things like Van Helsing. It's got very strong Resident Evil 4 vibes with its European villages and tassels, but also werewolves. Yeah, so excited by that. Also, the fact that village lets you do it in Roman numerals. So silly. Yes. <laughs> and then finally, we had some really interesting indie games as well. Kina Bridge of Spirits looked like a Disney film, honestly. It was just super stylized and the animation was beautiful. I'm really excited to see more of that. Goodbye Volcano High is about sad teenage dinosaurs and, I mean, what more do you want from an indie game? Stray lets you play as a cat in a post-apocalypse where all the humans have died and have been replaced by robots and it just looked delightful. Little Devil Inside was confusing. It looks like it's some kind of very light monster hunter game where you play as a young lad taking down huge beasts while an old man poos. Not really sure what that's about, but I'm excited to see more. The games that Sony showed off were very carefully considered. There was a little bit there for everyone. You had games for younger players, for older players, for teenagers, for people who are into casual experiences, for people who are more into hardcore experiences, multiplayer games, racing games, and that is 
so important, I think. They really knocked it out the park in terms of variety. They showed off titles that showcased the unique abilities of the PlayStation 5, which is really important because that's going to be the biggest differentiator this generation. You know, technically, really, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox, the differences are quite minute from what we're hearing from developers. Yes, the raw numbers, the Xbox is more powerful, but I think to the average consumer, because of diminishing returns and things like graphics, they're both going to look very, very similar. So things like quick loading and haptic feedback on your controller and even the visual design of the console itself, those are the things that are going to convince people to jump to this platform. So this presentation perfectly encapsulated what will make the PlayStation 5 so special. A wide range of titles for lots of different people, two different consoles for two very different types of consumers, and a demonstration of the hardware that will make the PlayStation 5 unique. They nailed it. <laughs> they really nailed it. So what didn't we see? Well, we don't know the release date or the price, but that makes a lot of sense. Although a release date would have been nice, I think that Sony are waiting for Microsoft to announce theirs first, so they can make a tactical decision to maybe sneak out the PlayStation 5 before them. In terms of price, well, if they'd announced the price at the end there alongside the console, that would have been the talking point. This is going to be expensive, I think we already know this. A lot of rumours and speculation are pointing to it costing maybe between £450 and £500. It's a lot of money, and I imagine if they'd said at the end there, hey, this is £500, that would have made a big difference to the overall mood and excitement around this presentation. Also, just like the release date, wouldn't surprise me if they're waiting for Microsoft to show their hand first, and then undercutting them slightly to make it look more appealing. Although, really, I'd imagine it'll be around $499 or pounds. They won't want to put a five at the start of that. Psychologically, as soon as something's over 500, I think that becomes a very different type of investment. Even though 499, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money, isn't it? So that's it. That's my initial Twitfire reaction to the PlayStation 5 gameplay reveal. It was amazing. I loved it. It was very exciting. Without E3 this year, it felt like the proper E3 showcase. And that was fantastic. That was everything this needed to be. A bombastic, exciting reveal event that gets us all excited for the next generation of PlayStation. I would argue it was better than the initial PlayStation 4 presentation. It was definitely better than the PlayStation 3 one, but not in terms of memes, let's be honest. What did you think? Did you enjoy it? Are you excited for the next generation of PlayStation? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to hop on over to our website for all the latest information about the PlayStation 5 and make sure to subscribe to Push Square for everything PlayStation. Thank you very much for watching. I am off to bed. It's late, way past my bedtime. <laughs>